Now there are effectively six reasons why doctors are getting reported to ACPRA. And unfortunately, the most common reason is sexual misconduct. So what I've basically done is analyze 12 months worth of cases that come up in the ACPRA newsletters that we get every month under the section medical regulation at work. And we're gonna try to figure out some trends here in terms of what is happening, who is doing this, where are they from, what is their specialty, what is their gender, and what was the consequence? What was the outcome? Now, before we begin, let me just clarify, you do like spreadsheets, right? Oof, great. So do I. Let's jump straight into it. So this is what I'm talking about here. Why are doctors being reported to ACPRA? And we're going to zoom into the particular sections and get a sense of the trends here. Now, this was 12 months worth of newsletters, but as you can see, some months are skipped. So in those particular months, there either were no case reports or there were a few months where there were no newsletters. Uh, I'm actually not sure you noticed that. So as you can see in the number of cases, this is a summary. There were 22 cases that were described in the ACPRA newsletter. So I've basically specified six main categories. And the first category was professional misconduct and I have specified sexual and the reason that I specified that is because unfortunately in a lot of the cases that is what was featured so if you've never read any of these cases they are actually really interesting to read the second category is professional misconduct other and there were quite a few really interesting cases <laughs> one of the cases was I shouldn't really laugh because it's pretty bad but one of the cases was a doctor basically punched a patient I don't know the context and it wasn't described exactly why that doctor punched the patient patient in the face that was described that it was in the face. So I kind of grouped that into professional misconduct other. Another reason why doctors are getting in trouble with ACPRA is inadequate documentation or management plans. And that often happens after ACPRA starts investigating the allegations. And I don't know if this is the case with ACPRA because I'm positive it was the case with the GMC, the General Medical Council that regulates doctors in the UK where I spent the last 13 years. There are a lot of complaints that don't get into the investigation phase. These complaints that I'm describing here have all gone through into the investigation phase. So what I mean by that is the people who are analyzing the initial complaints might have got a sense that there's a little bit of substance to some of these accusations and started digging a little bit deeper. And then often what they find is that some of these doctors have inadequate documentation or management plans. And so I actually attended a few sessions with the GMC because I'm just really fascinated by medical legal stuff. And what they were saying is that the vast, vast majority of complaints complaints to the GMC, and I suspect it is similar with ACPRA, are just simply disregarded straight away. Because unfortunately, there can be some malicious complaints, especially when it comes to prescribing drugs, drugs of dependence, those kind of things that doctors really aren't keen on prescribing. Or perhaps there were some communication issues, a bit of a misunderstanding with the person that you were consulting with. And so I think they get enough of these complaints to get a sense of which one has substance and in which one there was just a bit of a misunderstanding. Fail to gain consent that will often feature in a lot of these cases as well, especially when we're talking about surgical specialties or procedural specialties. Inappropriate prescriptions, and this is particularly Schedule A drugs. Now I have created a video about Script Check, which is essentially a prescription monitoring system that analyzes all the prescriptions and dispensing actions when it comes to Schedule A drugs, which are drugs of dependence. A good example are painkillers, opioids, uh, benzos. Those all get recorded nowadays. And in the video that I created, and I'll leave a link in the description below, checking script check and other prescription monitoring services in many states is mandatory before you prescribe Schedule A drugs. And so sometimes doctors get in trouble because they're either not following these Schedule A rules or they're prescribing super, super high doses that are flagging on the system. Now, another thing that unfortunately feature quite a bit was self-prescribing and prescribing for family. I get the sense that I'm just going to make another video about this because it seems so obvious to me because it was really drilled down into us. <laughs> I have heard of doctors in the UK who get a phone call from the GMC the moment a prescription is issued by a pharmacist that say has the same name as the prescriber. And I know of a case in the UK where a doctor prescribed herself some amoxicillin for a sinus infection. And when she went to the chemist half an hour later, the GMC called her and said, We've noticed that you've self-prescribed some antibiotics. Can you please explain why you didn't seek an independent professional opinion? Nothing happened to her. It was just a warning. But unfortunately, from the cases that I was reading, sometimes these prescriptions just go on and on and on. And people are prescribing to themselves, to their families, to their pets. Well, I don't know. In summary, it does make for interesting reading, but obviously things need to slightly change. So this is the super geeky fun bit. What I'm going to do here is highlight the categories and I'm going to highlight the summaries. And if I click on this little insert chart <laughs> button, 
you will see magic. I'm going to change this into a pie chart. And let's see what's happening here, because this is a really great graphic illustration of how often what is happening. Now, just bear in mind that even though there are only 23 cases, in certain cases, a few boxes got ticked in terms of professional misconduct or inadequate documentation. And so every time that would happen, even if it was just one case, I would tick those three boxes. As you can see, unfortunately, professional misconduct, sexual professional misconduct, is the most common reason why doctors are being reported to ACPRA. I mean, some of these cases are triggering. Some of these cases are really terrible to read. I suspect because the actions of those doctors were so terrible that it did trigger an investigation into their particular case. Now, before we proceed, I just want to put things into context. These are 22 cases. As you can see from this website, which is the Australian Government Department of Health an aged care website, there are over 100,000 doctors and only 22 cases. And only a few of those cases, there was sexual misconduct that was featured here. So by and large, the vast majority of doctors are doing an amazing job and working really hard to make sure that patients get the best quality care and they behave very professionally. But unfortunately, there are a few bad eggs out there. And that's essentially what I think ACPRA is for. So yeah, let's just put this into context. There are over $100,000 $100, doctors. Let's put this into context. There are over 100,000 doctors out there practicing in Australia, doing an absolutely tremendous job. And we salute you for that. We are just describing the odd ones and trying to get some trends here. Things to look out for for yourself. Uh, going back to my little graph here, you can see that the professional misconduct other is about 10% of cases. A few of the interesting ones I've already mentioned, that doctor that punched a patient in the face. Uh, another really interesting case is there was a doctor who was diagnosing BPPV in a lot of patients, which is benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. She was referring those patients to her dad who wasn't a health professional, who wasn't a doctor, who wasn't a vestibular physio, but who somehow learned how to do the Epley maneuver and then would charge the patients for it. She wouldn't tell the patient that it was her dad doing this. And then obviously at the end of the consultation, he would kind of charge the patient for the service that he was providing completely illegally. I'm actually not sure if that was illegal. Uh, it probably was because I think the patients were actually under the impression that they are seeing some kind of medically trained person. So I just lumped that into professional misconduct other because it's so bonkers. I just didn't know what category to put it in. As you can see here, inadequate documentation. Again, I don't want to generalize too much here, but if you're doing some dodgy stuff, then you'll probably do a few dodgy stuff. And so if your professional misconduct is pretty bad, I'm going to suspect that your documentation also isn't going to be something that you're worried about too much. Failed to gain consent. Now that is a really interesting one because it is drilled into us a lot when we're talking about procedural things. I think when they are checking your documentation, they want it to be very clear that you have gained consent. So inappropriate prescribing, again, featured quite heavily here. We're talking about Schedule 8 drugs. There was a doctor who was prescribing growth hormone for herself and for a few patients, effectively bodybuilding purposes. And finally, self-prescribing and prescribing for family. I know sometimes we might think that we really know best and we provide really great quality care. And sometimes I also think that I probably know best. I read loads of guidelines. I do loads of courses. So if I really care about someone, like someone from my family, like I want to treat them because I've read all these guidelines. There are many reasons why we shouldn't be treating our family. And there are even more reasons why we shouldn't be treating ourselves. I am noticing this trend and I'm super happy about it, that loads of GPs are actually coming to see me as patients. And I love that. And it's super important because you need someone who is not emotionally invested in in managing your medical issues or your particular case or the case of a family member who can give objective professional advice. So again, I personally feel that that is definitely something that ACPRA is going to be targeting.